Before we talk about hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions, we're going to talk about how those solutions can affect cells. Now, if you remember, hypertonic solutions compared to hypotonic solutions were solutions that have a higher concentration of solutes in them compared to that hypotonic solution. So it's really important that organisms are regulating exactly how much water they have in their system and how many solutes or what their concentration of solutes are in their body. Because if we get situations or environments where there's too many solutes that, that can pull water out of your cells, and we really don't want um, a net flow of water moving into the cells or out of the cells. So if we take your cells, animal cells, and we place them in a hypotonic solution, the reason why I wrote hypotonic with this big capitalized O is because I want to make sure you understand that if you take a cell and put it in a hypotonic solution, this is what's going to happen to the cell. It's going to expand. So let's look at this diagram down here. It's telling you that we have cells and we've placed them in a hypotonic solution. So if the outside is hypotonic, then that means by default the inside is going to have more solutes in it and it's going to be the hypertonic solution. If you remember, water goes to the hypertonic solution. Remember what party you want to go to. You want to go to the hyper party. So in a hypotonic solution, water moves into animal cells and animal cells can become so full of water that they break and they can die. So hypotonic solutions make cells do this. Now a hypertonic solution is going to do the opposite. A hypertonic solution is going to make cells shrink. So that is why I made my E look like this. I made it small. I want you to think of it as being an O that shriveled up to look more like an E now. If I take an animal cell or plant cell and I put it in a hypertonic solution, so that means that the outside of the cell is now hypertonic, the inside is hypotonic, Water always moves to the hypertonic solution from a hypotonic solution. Water moves out of these cells, and these cells will shrink up. For us, for animals, any time that we put a solution into your body, we always want to make sure that it's isotonic compared to your cells. So now if your cells are surrounded by a solution that's isotonic compared to your cells, that means the outside solution and the inside solution are isotonic to one another, and there's going to be an even movement of water. If some water moves into the cells, then some water is going to move out, and those cells are going to be able to maintain this normal shape. Whenever animal cells break, like you see here, we actually have a term for that. It's called cytolysis or cytolysis. Cyto means cell. Lysis means to break. So you can probably figure out why we term this cytolysis. Cyto, cell, lysis means to break. Whenever our cells shrivel up, then the term for that is called crenation. Now to help you remember that, I think this word, um, or this word reminds me of cremation. And if you think about it, if someone is cremated, then they're going to end up becoming much smaller than what they were whenever they were alive because we're, we're going to reduce them basically to ashes and they're going to be able to fit into an urn on you know, someone's shelf. So we make you smaller when we cremate you. So crenation is whenever these animal cells get smaller, whenever they shrink up. Now let's talk about plant cells because, because they have a cell wall, then um, they're going to react a little bit differently whenever they're placed in these different types of solutions. Again, if I take a plant cell and I put it in a hypotonic solution, so if I pour water on it, hypotonic solution, by default that means the inside is hyper, water moves to that hypertonic solution, and plant cells are going to swell. If I take a plant cell and I put a hypertonic solution on it, water comes out because the cell is hypotonic, the outside's hyper, and water moves out to that hypertonic solution, and that these plant cells shrink. Now in this situation, whenever the plant cell is, is swelling up with water, that plant cell can't rupture because they have that added accessory there. They have that cell wall, and that prevents their plasma membrane from getting too big to the point where it can actually rupture. And this is actually the best situation for plant cells. For animal cells, we need to surround those cells with isotonic solutions. But for a plant cell, a plant cell or plants actually prefer hypotonic solutions. And here's the reason why is they're built of cells and they don't have any kind of skeletal structure 
to um, give them shape. We have a skeleton to uh, aid in our structure, but they don't have that. So they literally are just built of, of cells. And so these cells have to be very, very tight so that these plant cells can form their structures and they can be upright. I tell students to think of um, if I asked you to build a tower and I asked you to build a tower um, out of marshmallows or if I asked you to build a, build a tower out of wooden blocks and you had a race to get this done before another group, I think most groups would choose to build out of those wood blocks because they're, they're sturdy, they're, they're hard, and you're going to be able to stack them a lot easier and, and make this upright structure. This is kind of like, this, this cell right here would be like a squishy marshmallow. Imagine trying to stack a bunch of squishy marshmallows, like it's just going to fall over. So plants actually prefer a hypotype or hypotonic environment so that their cells become nice and tight and full of water. So here's a situation where we have an isotonic compared to the plant cell. Um, so if some water moves in, some's going to move out, but this cell is actually going to be a little more squishy than this one over here. Now remember the animal cells, we had terms for when the cells were breaking or shrinking. So it's cytolysis, when the cells were breaking and dying, it's crenation, whenever they're shrinking up. Plant cells also shrink, but we have a different name for it. We call this plasmolysis. And it's more named after the fact that the plasma membrane shrinks away from the cell wall whenever the water is leaving the cell. It's kind of named after the, the plasma membrane, the fact that we have kind of the shrinking of the plasma membrane. Another difference and another reason why we, we term these um, with two different terms is because a animal cell, if it's suffering from conation, it dies. It doesn't really come back from that. But if a plant cell is suffering from plasmolysis, if we add water to it, then that cell membrane um, will move back up against that cell wall as that cell fills up, and a, the plant cell can recover from that. It usually doesn't die whenever um, that plant cell has been plasmalized. So let's just review those terms in the next blank. The animal cells bursting and dying, that was cytolysis, so cell lysis, cell breaking. Animal cells shrinking, think of cremation, you'll shrink up, but it's called crenation. When the plant cells shrink, it's because their plasma membrane is pulled away from the wall, it's called plasmolysis. Now the last topic that we're going to talk about is trigger pressure. When we talk about trigger pressure, we can only talk about plant cells. Plant cells have the ability to experience what we call trigger pressure, even the increasing in trigger pressure or the lowering of trigger pressure, because the definition of trigger pressure is pressure exerted on the cell wall by water in the cell. And animal cells do not have a cell wall, so technically they can never develop trigger pressure. So trigger pressure is really just related to plant cells. If a plant cell has high trigger pressure, like this one does right here, then you have a very full, a very tight cell. And this is actually, again, normal or what is best for plants. If you have a plant cell and it has low trigger pressure, then there's no water inside putting pressure on the cell wall. I'm going to draw that on this one. There's water inside, so there's pressure put on that cell wall. So this is what we mean by trigger pressure. But since the water is coming out of this cell over here, then we don't have this buildup of pressure due to water inside the cell. And so this is a squishy cell. It's really limp. It's really flaccid. This is actually what the cells are going to look like of a plant that's in your house that is wilted. So a wilted plant has plant cells that have low trigger pressure. And so these cells are really squishy and that plant's leaves will drop and it'll fall over because it's not, um, it doesn't have those tight cells to keep it upright. So again, let's write high. I'm going to put TP for trigger pressure in this cell. This cell is experiencing low trigger pressure. You can also relate this to something like water balloons. If you put a lot of water in a water balloon, then there's going to be a lot of pressure in that balloon. It has high pressure, high trigger pressure. If you take water out of a water balloon, then it's going to be really squishy and it's going to have really low pressure or low trigger pressure. 